it's Hope at Crafty Hope and welcome. It is time for the week 24 mixed media prompt project for hashtag Crafty Hope prompts. That is just a prompt deck building challenge I gave to myself back at the beginning of October. I've opened it up to any of you that want to participate either using the prompts that I draw every week or by drawing your own. I've got a full list below. Basically every week on Monday I'm drawing three prompts from my list of 156 prompts and then altering a playing card using those prompts. The card itself is altered with the prompts and then later in the week I use those same three prompts to make a different project so that I'm not just using them on cards, I'm using them on other things as well and that can be just about anything. Um, an art journal page, tags, I've done at least one jewelry piece, um, all kinds of stuff. So um, I will have a full playlist at the end so that you can kind of, you know, peruse that as you want. That includes also other people on here on YouTube that have joined in on the project. As well, um, I made this card on Monday. So I'm going to put a link right up here to how this card was made. It is a little fiddly because some of my files were corrupted and uh, some of the making of this side of it didn't get recorded. But I explained to you all of that in the video. And like I said, there's a whole list of other cards and projects to be viewed. Let's get to what I'm gonna do this week or what I think I'm gonna do. So my three prompts this week are rainbow, house, and dots. So those are all kind of shapes or structural or mark making kind of things. I explained in my video when I made this card what each of those things mean for me. Rainbow of course can be like a color spectrum. It can be the shape of a rainbow. It can be, you know, however you want to interpret that. House, um, yeah. Anyway, let's, let's, huh, let's talk about house. House is what, as soon as I pulled house, I was like, oh, I know what I'm going to do. And what I thought of were these. <laughs> This one is a pre-made little birdhouse structure from the Dollar Tree. But I have this also from the Dollar Tree that is a build your own birdhouse kit. And so I thought, you know what, I really want to alter one of these with some of my mixed media techniques. So I think I'm going to do this one because the cutting and measuring out of like pieces of paper on this side is going to be a bit fiddly whereas I can do it directly on to the pieces here and then assemble it. I think that's what I'm going to do. So with that in mind, for Rainbow, um, I have a couple ideas. One, today I was at the Dollar Tree and picked up this sticker book that has rainbows on it. Um, lots of them. Every page has different rainbows, but I really like this one. I don't know that that will fit on my little birdhouse, but we'll see. I'm, I may put these on there. I may not. The other idea for rainbow is the paper that I am thinking I'm going to adhere. I think I might do, um, uh, like a oh an art crayon like a distress crayon or a marabou art crayon or some, one of those things maybe even a woody but something that will smear and blend together to create like a tr translucent rainbow effect over maybe some dictionary paper or something like that so there's that idea and then for dots y'all the dots in general do not concern me <laughs> I've gone over and over my head I may just like I did on the card take some kind of pencil or pen or marker and make dots I've got uh, one of those things stencils I've been trying the hardest time coming up with the word stencil lately I may take stencils and put them over it I might find some craft paper maybe that has dots on it I I don't know. I just picked up some fabric, too, that had dots on it. So maybe I'll add that to somehow. I don't know how I'm going to use dots, but I'm not super concerned about it. I'm concerned about building this house. <laughs> so I'm going to fast forward through some of this, and we'll go over which I might end up using this one if this is too complicated. So let's see what happens. Let's go. 
This was a much longer process than I anticipated, but y'all, I'm so happy with the results. So I'm going to walk y'all through as much as I think y'all need to see. And I cut out a ton of it because it, it was repetitive or whatever. So first thing I did was pull out all of the pieces of the birdhouse. And then I put away some of the things I was afraid I was going to lose on my desk or I didn't think I was going to need. There was like some string and an eyelet and the glue. And I knew I didn't need any of that immediately. What I needed were the, the roof pieces, the front and back, the sides, and the base of this. Now, I'm going to tell you, I end up not using the base in this, but I, I didn't know that when I started. So, I was just kind of trying to figure out which pieces were which pieces because, you know, this is just a little Dollar Tree house and it wasn't super explicit. So once I had all of that figured out, I decided what I wanted to do was prep the wood. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint all of the the front, back, sides, and bottom with gesso, um, at least on the outside portion of them. And I'm using white gesso to do that. Um, the brush I have here was really crummy. <laughs> it was like, I don't even know why I decided to use this super plastic paintbrush, but I tried to make it work. So once I got the outside done, I've grabbed the roof tiles and this is a Oh, it's a acrylic craft paint, and I think it's a folk art one, and it's like basic green or something, but it's the perfect mossy, grassy green color that I wanted. So I'm going to do just one side of all of these roof panels. Again, the outside portion of all of it. So I've done what I consider the outside portion of all of the, the like the front, back, and sides of the house itself, and then this is the roof. And then I'm going to come back and the inside portion of the front, back, and sides, I'm going to paint with this black gesso. Now I'll end up using a bit more of this black gesso on pretty much everything later. But for now, I'm painting the inside because I realized that once this is assembled, because of that round opening in the, the front of the house, you'll be able to see inside the house. And I didn't want it to be like super boring or whatever. So yeah. And I really didn't need to just so, I guess, the outside because I am going to cover a lot of it with other things. But for me, it felt like prepping it. So here's how I'm bringing Rainbow in. I've got these Colorix crayons, which are a lot like the most any other art crayon, gelatos or the Marabou art crayons or the Distress crayons, all of those. They're just kind of a creamy crayon type material. And I pulled out all seven colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And I'm just putting a little strip of them on this dictionary paper. And I actually do um, several of these on uh, like two different pages of dictionary paper, but I'm not going to make y'all watch all of that. But I'm taking a wet paintbrush and just blending all of this together so it doesn't feel like it's just a crayon scribbled on there. I love that these are water reactive and I use these colorics once because they're what I've had the longest and need to be used. So that was the only reason I grabbed those. So you see I did this one again I did on the right side of that page did another one then I took a whole other piece of dictionary paper and did another one and finally just was like okay what am I do? So these are the side pieces of my house and they fit pretty perfectly on that first one I did. So I'm just going to take a pencil and trace around it so I know where to cut. I probably could have used a pen because this is kind of hard to see with the pencil, but it's fine. I, I made it work. I just made sure I cut it a little big so that um, it would all fit. And I figured even if it was a little small, I could ink the edges somehow and fix it. So... So then I take one of them, measure about where it sits, since these are both the same size, I wasn't super concerned. And you can see I started to tear it, but y'all, I was so concerned that I would like absolutely tear it poorly that I was like, nope, gonna use the scissors. And then with Mod Podge and a paintbrush to smear it, I'm gonna stick these dictionary papers down. And that's it, I've got rainbow on these, done. Not a problem, so yeah. And you can see, and I didn't have to, like I said, I didn't have to gesso those sides, but I think it gave it a nice base to prep so that, yeah, I think maybe the, the wood would have soaked in a lot of the Mod Podge, whereas with it, the gesso on it, it gave it a better surface. So I'm just repeating that over on this second outside panel. And I'm trying to remember now what order I did all of the things for this. 
it was one of those things that I knew kind of what I wanted to do for this, but it was, it was a whole matter of like bringing it together. I was very intimidated by doing this because it was something a little outside of my usual, but it's one of those things that, you know, you'll never, and I think I said this in one of my other videos, if you don't try something new, you'll never know if you can do it. So just, you know, those things that you think, well, maybe I can try this, do it, try it, go for it. I've been meaning to do this with one of these little houses for the longest time. So I'm super happy I did. And I've got another one of these build your own ones as well as that other one that I can do some more. So once I got those down, I did see that there was more white space on them that I wanted. So I did add a little bit more of that art crayon on. And somewhere in there it hit me that the what I want because I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with the front and back of this. And I kind of wanted them a little bit different than the sides and not just rainbow. So I'm going to go ahead and paint them with the black gesso also because I decided what I want to do is rust them. <laughs> Seriously, y'all, one day I'm gonna buy some of that paint that oxidizes and rusts. I just have to figure out which brand. A lot of them are really industrial sized things or hard to find and I want something that's, you know, once I buy it and love it, I'll be able to get it again. <laughs> so what I tend to use is this Finnebear Prima Marketing stuff. It's a rust effects paste in it. So it's three pots of paste that are, um, that help you achieve a rust one. This first one is the gunkiest. It's thick and sandy and brown. And so I'm using a popsicle stick to steer it. I did a, to steer it. <sighs> I'm using a popsicle stick to smear it. And it is, I had, as I say, I added water to it because it had gotten a little too thick to even budge. But I love this stuff. I just don't use it near enough. It's super fun. It gives a lot of texture. This one has a ton of texture to it. And that's really kind of the intention of it. Because, you know, when you rust things or find rusty things, they've kind of got like a bumpy, weird texture to them. So this worked out great. The popsicle th stick, I think, was, I don't know that, I mean, you could use a palette knife or something like that. But since I was using the popsicle stick to stir up the paste, it worked perfectly. Yeah, you know, use what you have, guys. And I know that there are probably some recipes out there for how to make your own of the rust paste. If you can't get the Finnebear stuff, I don't even know if it's still available. I think at one point Mickelnay had a tutorial on making your own rust paste. But um, yeah, I have this Finnebear stuff, so I use it. All right, so that is the brown. Once that was done, I took a big paintbrush with the orange, and it is, it's still textured, but not near as textured as the brown is, and I'm going over the whole thing with the orange, because to me, the orange is really what the main color of, of rust is, is this, I don't know, burnt orange, what do you call that, like a pumpkin-y orange. So I'm going over all of it, trying to get some of the texture out. My paintbrush kept trying to just pick up the color. And I think I go over both of them twice because you can see the one on the right that I didn't get quite enough of the actual paste and had just picked up the color and it was like soaking into the brown. So I wanted to bring it back out. And once I get the orange done, the last color is a yellow. And it, again, is not as textured as the other two. It's like it goes down in texture. So I'm using a smaller brush for this one because you don't need near as much of the yellow as you do the other two colors. So I'm just kind of randomly patting it around to give it that little touch of, of contrast. And this was, you know, I really love the effect I get from this. You can tell it's not real rust, obviously, but it, it gives it that feeling that on first glance, you're like, okay, rust. And then it's like, oh wait, no, <laughs> but it's fun. It's fun to do. And I love getting texture and bringing out texture. And this felt a lot more, I don't know, like me than anything else I could have picked. I love rusty, grungy things and a touch of rainbow. And I don't know, I wanted this project felt very intimidating because I knew it was something I wanted to keep in my house. So I had a hard time deciding what it was I wanted to display. 
All right, so while my rust is drying, I go back to the side panels and I've got my Liquitex acrylic ink in gold, which y'all, I've added some water to it and I'm trying to eke out all the last little bits of this bottle. I do have a new bottle of it, but it's fun to try to, to get what's left in it. So I'm just adding some splatter on top of that um, on top of that rainbow, just pushing it back a little. I want the rainbow there, but I don't want it to be the focus of these sides, especially since the front and the back are going to be that rusty. So here are my dots. This is how I'm bringing dots in, and I've got some, this is Ranger Crackle Paste. It's the opaque white, and I've got a dot stencil. And I'm just using a palette knife and smearing that crackle paste onto my rainbow panels. This I was super excited about because like rust, crackle is my jam. I like anything grungy and old and kind of wabi-sabi-ish. So that's what I'm doing is adding that. Because like I said, this was something I knew I wanted in my house and not something I was going to sell or display or anything like that. So I'm getting it all spread out and with crackle paste, I couldn't really, uh, since I'm using the stencil, I didn't have a choice on how thick or thin it is. It's as thick as the stencil is, but you leave it to air dry. So I left this to air dry and here is that wonderful crackle and it's a little imperfect and that's kind of what I wanted, but don't try to uh, uh, heat dry it. It doesn't do quite as well if you heat dry it. Now with that white crackle paste, it felt a little too fresh and new and bright. And I, like I said, I wanted the grunge on it. It didn't quite go with those rusty front and back. So I'm using just stress oxide and rusty hinge on the edges to add a little bit of the rusty color. And I'm activating it with some water, especially on those edges. But as it hits those white crackle spots, I'm like, ooh, I really like that color. These could be rusty crackle dots. So I'm adding the rusty hinge to those, those crackle dots. But it's not giving me as much color as I want. So what I decide to do, and you'll see that here in just a second, is that I pull in my quinacridone nickel azo gold which to me is the perfect rusty color so I'm just putting a tiny drop in my palette and I'm going to put a little bit on each of those crackles now as I work with these crackle dots some of them are going to crackle apart and fall to pieces and I am letting myself be okay with that because like I said I want this to be kind of grungy and wabi-sabi and and all of that so I I'm let, making myself be like, okay, that's fine because these, if it's crackled, it's going to fall apart. It's going to have that old and age and, you know, decay portion to it. So this next portion is exactly right here. I decide to take my Stabilo All and go around the dots just to give them a little definition. You can see I gave it a thumbs down because that one completely fell apart so I decided to go ahead and dry it I was afraid too much water had maybe gotten on them but it's still a couple of them start to fall apart on me and like I said I've tried to be okay with it see I'm shaking it every now and then getting those rusty pieces that fall off I mean the rest the crackle pieces that fall off off of there so I'm going to go around each and every one of these dots once or twice uh, I was kind of varying that up and once I get around all of them, I will take my Distress Sprayer and activate that Stabilo All. And this is going to do several things. It's going to let the Stabilo All get into those cracks so that they define a little bit more and it adds a touch more of the grunginess that I want. I did consider adding coffee to it, but I was afraid that might be a little too sticky. So I, I really like the idea of, and see, look at that. That's another one of the crackle pieces that just fell off and that's okay. All right, so here when I spray it, you see how it activates it and I'm going to let gravity move that around and get inside of those. And when, when this dries, it's going to be much lighter. It doesn't stay that super deep dark that it has when it's wet. So yeah, so I'll go ahead and dry this so that nothing else falls apart on me. <laughs> And then from there, I'm going to go back to my front and my back. And since I had added the gold splatter on the sides, I decided to do the same thing on the front and gold. Don't worry. Everything's getting gold splatter. The inside pieces are going to get gold splatter. Everything gets gold splatter. Like I said, I'm trying to use up this gold ink. 
<laughs> so there's a bit of gold splatter on everything. And I love it. And this stuff, it's, I don't know if you can tell, it doesn't look like much until I dry it. When I dry it, it really pops. Oh, and I had more splatters on that front portion than on the back portion. So I went back in to add a few more on the back. Just because there's going to be less interest on the back anyway. So I need it to have all of that. And now it's time to start gluing everything together. And y'all, I was real worried about the glue that came in the little kit. But it worked way better than I thought it would. I was assuming that it was just like an Elmer's glue or a school glue. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's more like a tacky glue. But it held pretty nicely. Watch this. In a second, I'm going to let go. And that holds. It's, wow. I was totally impressed. I did have a problem here at the end with the roof. And bring in some wood glue. And that got super messy. But I realized that I didn't put glue on all the places I should have. So that was, that was user error there. So once I let that the sides dry to the front, I go ahead and add the glue to the the sides and put the back on. And like I said, I've decided at this, was it at this point? I don't know, somewhere in here not to worry with the back. Now I realized I never put the black gesso on the roof and which wouldn't be a huge deal except I knew that the front and back portion of those roof tiles were going to overhang and I wanted something on them so I'm going to go ahead and put that black gesso on all of them and let that dry and I don't know why y'all didn't need to see this because I already explained that everything on the inside gets <laughs> black gesso but in any case y'all get to see some of this I probably should have cut it down I don't know what I was thinking um wow I what am I doing here <laughs> so y'all I like I said this was such a fun project for me did I doze off when I was editing this portion I mm, I don't know this was a super quick process though um to, to get these little things. Once I kind of got into the groove of making this and took the pressure off myself, I was so happy with this. I, oh, y'all, I love this project. All right, so there are the roof tiles. I'm checking on my box and realized that I didn't do the sides of the like front back panels. And so I'm just using my Sharpie uh, poster marker, paint pen, and putting the black on those edges to finish them off. So, and I thought that it, it works fine. You don't really even notice it because it's just on those edges. So, yeah. And I wasn't concerned about the roof of it because it, um, yeah, I was going to have those roof tiles on it. Okay, now all of that is dry. And yeah, here's where I'm going to grab that gold ink <laughs> again and splatter. And I'm sorry, I'm off the side of the frame. I, there was so much going on on my desk. But, and I actually didn't even splatter the front portion of the house because that'll never be seen. But both sides and the back got gold splatter. And I don't think I splattered the roof either. But I just wanted, when you look in that hole, that there's something of interest in, in there. All right. So now for the roof, like I said, I start with the glue that comes with it. And do you see where my issue is? I just did it on the roof line and not on the side panel too, which is what I should have done to have more surface area having glue on it. Y'all. So this becomes an issue. Um, as it dries, it wasn't sticking as much as I thought it would like the front and the back did. And I couldn't figure out why. And I don't know. So I will bring in just some wood glue in a little bit. And it really should have been obvious right there that, yeah, I don't know. But this house came together. I mean, it is intended for children. And I don't know what made me so nervous about putting it together and all of that. All right. So here's that wood glue. And it, y'all, it was gloopier than I thought it was going to be. Um, look at that. And so it ends up running down portions of my house you'll see some of this in a little bit and I will fix it but it's still because it didn't set even as fast as that glue that came with the the kit did it's yeah adhesives y'all adhesives there's more adhesives to come because I've got one or two little things we're gonna do here to add to this house and really elevate it 
Okay, see there's where some of that is running. So I'm just going to wipe it. And you see that because it's so gloopy that the roof tiles are just like sliding off. <laughs> it, was, it was a mess. And here's where I realized I didn't put glue on those side panels. So I added it there, stick that back on, and y'all, it worked. It was perfect. I Yeah, I don't know. All right, once that all... I'm gonna leave that to set, or I let it set. And now I'm coming in with this reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree and a hot glue gun. And I'm going to speed this up because this was, this was a good long process. And all, yeah, I'm just sticking down a little hot glue, sticking some moss on and covering the entirety of that roof. Now that's why I painted the screen. I knew from the beginning that I wanted a mossy roof. <laughs> it was it was my whole intent. It was something very Hobbit house or uh, oh, what are those called? The earth houses that, ha that are kind of buried in the ground. And it had that very fairy housey feel to me if I added the moss. So that's what I'm doing. A little bit of hot glue, a little bit of moss, and it made a huge mess. I don't know if you can tell, but I've got a piece of tracing paper down on the surface of my desk to catch the loose bits of moss that fall down because I knew that was going to happen. Everything I've seen about people using this moss on things have have said how messy it is. So, yeah. And it takes me a while. There were certain parts I didn't like. And every once in a while I would turn it over and shake it to see what was moving that I didn't want moving. And you can see like along there I could still see the roof. And I didn't want to see the roof. So I, yeah. And that, that was a portion I didn't really like. So I wanted to break it up. And tried to just get moss where I thought moss needed to be. It was, it was fun and messy. And yeah. So I'm getting these last little bits. Um. This should be toward the end of it. I'm trying to like look and see where I see any of that roof. And like I said, if there were floppy bits, I glued things back down and I was breaking that reindeer moss apart. Yeah. And letting it set. And it's just so cute. Look at y'all. How cute is this? It's so stinking cute. I will tell you in the pictures at the end, you'll see that it almost looks like it's some kind of crazy Afro Chia pet. I... I love it. It's fabulous. So I think this is the last little bits right in here. Um, like I said, I didn't need to include all of this for you, but I, you know, I wanted y'all to see what I did and how long it took me and that I was kind of meticulous with it. And so I found when in my searching for my hundred day project, I think I found this ring that's some kind of old bro brooch. It was broken. It's missing some pearls. And I used E6000 to glue it to the front of my little hole because it fit over it perfectly. And with all the gold splatters and all of that, I thought it was fairly perfect. Now, some of that wood glue was still showing as kind of, you can kind of see it in there as a white little bit. So I just using some of that black gesso that's still on my desk, I am just painting that on to see, you know, to get it. And that helps too, because I've got those black edges and all of that. And the last thing I'm going to do, y'all, is I grab a battery operated tea light. Um, and it doesn't fit perfectly. You have to kind of go at an angle and turn it on and y'all look at this is it not the cutest thing? I am absolutely smitten with this project. So that's what I did with, with Rainbow House and Dots for my mixed media prompt project number 24. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm sorry it was such a lengthy video, but it was a lot of fun to do and play and experiment and try something I've been wanting to do. All right, guys, I appreciate you sticking with me, and I will see y'all on Monday with three more props. Thanks for watching. Bye.